Good afternoon. Today we are going to go over a quick uh, lesson on one of the strategies we use to do some rounding. As the students get into the larger place values, we notice there is a little bit of a drop off on their ability to do this. Um, so in this case, we're rounding to the nearest 10,000. Our number that we're going to try to round is 37,642. The first thing I like to emphasize, if we're rounding to the nearest 10,000, that means we're counting by 10,000. 0, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. This is called 30, This is called a vertical number line. My next 10,000 from 30,000 would be called 40,000. 40, we then ask students to figure out what is the midpoint. What is halfway between 30,000 and 40,000? In this case, 30 we then ask students to place the number that we're trying to round. In this case, it's 37,642. Well, I'm going to place that right here. This gives them the visual model of if we're rounding to the nearest 10,000, well, is that closer to 30,000 or is that closer to 40,000? It's a little bit different than how you and I learned it, where they asked us to look one place value back. If that number is five or more, just round up. For some students, that works. However, this visual model really helps them kind of see, well, I'm rounding to the nearest 10,000. In this case, it is 40,000. This becomes important as they move on. It helps us use our extended math facts and ask ourselves if our answer is reasonable. If someone was allowed or asked, um, what is 4,652 times 4? The first thing we might say is, well, why don't we round this to the nearest thousand? So, first, I get myself ready by counting by thousand. Zero, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. Cole, what is the next thousand up from four thousand? Four thousand one. I mean, four thousand, five thousand. Five thousand, excellent. Halfway in between is 4,500. And then again, we ask them to place. Um, Utina Bonnie Karadisa, please come to the office. Tia Bonnie, would you please come to the office? Uh, and then we place them on, and then we can visually see well, if we're rounding to the nearest thousand, it's 5,000. This helps them because if I round to the nearest thousand, okay, here is 5,000. Now I start using my extended math facts. So, Cole, what is four times five? 30. I mean 20. <laughs> Which means this is 200. Four times 500 would be 2,004. And you often hear me say this, four rows of 5,000. 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. I know that this number is a reasonable answer for this number. That way when students actually multiply this number and to do two lessons at once, we're gonna use a little bit of the area model just to confuse everybody on the first day. I am decomposing these by their place value. Well, now I do the same thing with my error model. Four times four. Cool, how much is four times four? Four um, rows of four would be? Twelve. I mean, ah, uh, sixteen. It's hard 16. to do this at the same time. I didn't add these up. Well, I have sixteen thousand. I have 2,400, I have 200, and I have 8. Well, if I add these up, I get an answer of 18,608, telling me that this is a reasonable answer because it's close to my estimate. Um, that is how we round in fourth grade and why it becomes important. When we are using large numbers, students can get thrown off. Giovanni Paradise, could you please? If you're Giovanni and you're watching this video, go to the office. Um, any questions, please let me know. Other than that, thanks for the recording. Thanks.